Hello, I'm Denise Side. Today we're going to talk about developing phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is the foundational skills that students need to become fluent readers and to become fluent spellers. Phonemic awareness training should begin to happen before students are ever introduced to the letters or the phonograms. The first way to begin to develop phonemic awareness is to develop a kinesthetic awareness of sounds. Many young students are not aware of how sounds are made, and kinesthetic students in particular really benefit from understanding a bit more about how the sounds are formed. So you can do this very simply by initiating a discussion, and you can do this with a three or four year old even. Um, the young children are fascinated by this, and you can say to them, let's say the sound p together. And as they say p, you can say, what are you doing to say p? And they can feel their lips, they can talk about how their lips are popping. You can also say, why don't you put your hand in front of your mouth and say p? Do you feel the puff of air coming out? Then you can say, how about if we say b? And what are you doing when you say b? How is it different? How are p and b different? And the student might notice that their mouth is in the same position. And then you could say, why don't you put your hand on your throat and say p, b? Do you feel your throat vibrating when you say b? And students this way become aware of sounds and become aware of how those sounds are formed. You can do this with any of the sounds in the English language and just begin the discussion about the fact that there are sounds and that your mouth and your lips uh, use different formations to form those sounds. Uh, phonemic awareness training in developing the kinesthetic awareness of sounds can also be helpful for helping students to gain missing sounds. Many young students are missing the sound from their speech, and so you could show them the phonogram th and say, you know, this sound is made by putting your tongue out between your teeth and blowing. And this has a second sound, th, th and what's the difference between th and th? And what you'll find is that some students who are not real strong auditory learners will be able to form the sound when you show them the phonogram and uh, understand that as a kinesthetic clue to an action of how to form that sound. So in this way, students become more aware of the sounds of the language. After students become aware of sounds, then you can begin to work on blending compound words. One way you could do this is to play a little game. We're going to sound out the, I'm going to unglue two words and I want you to put them back together. So we could do rain, bow, rainbow. And I sometimes have kids do this while moving. I'll say, I'm going to say a word and take a step and take a step, and then I want you to glide and put it back together. So we could go rain, bow, rainbow, and slide it back together. Foot, ball, football, and glue it back together. Once the students are able to do compound words, you can move to one syllable words. I love to play Simon Says with young students and unglue words such as this, s, p, i, n, and they would spin, j, a, m, p, and they would jump. You can do a treasure hunt and unglue a word and have them go find it, s, p, u, n, spoon. You could lay out a group of pictures on the table and have them select the correct one. Once you have worked in one syllable words, then move to multisyllable words, such as h, r, m, a, n, i, k, a, harmonica. You'll notice it gets much more difficult when we move to multisyllable words. After students are able to glue together multisyllable words, you can have them begin practicing segmenting or ungluing the word, and you guess the word, or you do the action that they are telling you to do um, by ungluing it. Once students have the ability to glue and unglue words, then they're ready for other phonemic awareness activities. Many programs actually begin at this next step, such as being able to manipulate the first uh, letter in a word, such as if you have the word bat, what else could you put at the beginning? You could make it pat or hat. However, a student will be most successful at these sorts of activities if they already know how to break the word into its individual sounds. You can do the same thing with ending sounds and with middle sounds and do some of the worksheets that are available in many of the programs out there where students are asked to select words that have all the same um, beginning sound or something like that. 
Once students have developed these skills, you can move to rhyming. Rhyming is actually a very difficult skill, and many students who struggle with auditory processing will always struggle with rhyming or often struggle with rhyming very late, even though they're able to read. Because rhyming actually asks you to segment not just the last sound, but the last vowel and the last consonant sound within a word. But it's good to play rhyming games. It's great to read books and poems with a lot of rhymes because these also help students develop phonemic awareness skills. A final idea about how to simply incorporate phonemic awareness activities into your daily life is to read Dr. Seuss books and Shel Silverstein poems and, and other um, children's books that play with the rhythm and the rhyme of language. Just by listening to these books, students begin to understand and have a feel for the sounds of the language, which prepares them to um, learn the phonograms and to begin reading.